Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the most common valvular heart disease that is mitral stenosis. We all know that mitral valve is in between left atrium and left ventricle. During diastole, blood from the left atrium will flow to the left ventricle. During the initial phases of uh, diastole, blood will freely flow from the left atrium to left ventricle after opening of the mitral valve. At the end of the diastolic phase, there is something called as atrial booster kick. During that period, the remaining blood in the left atrium also will flow to the uh, left ventricle. That is a normal diastolic phase. So, once the mitral valve opens during the early diastolic phase, blood will flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle. At the end of the diastolic phase, again atrial booster kick or contraction will occur that will pump the remaining blood from the left atrium to left ventricle. Then the mitral valve forces that produces first start sound. Now we will see what are the causes of stenotic mitral valve. We can see the normal mitral valve and thickened mitral valve with the narrowing mitral valve orifice. Most common cause for mitral stenosis, rheumatic heart disease, especially in India, our country, uh, there are a lot of uh, rheumatic uh, fever cases and rheumatic heart diseases cases. One of the most commonly involved valve is mitral valve, that is rheumatic mitral valvular disease that commonly produces mitral stenosis than mitral regurgitation. But some patients can have mitral stenosis with mitral regurgitation. Congenital conditions like Hunter syndrome, Hurler syndrome, all these things also can produce mitral stenosis. Rarely carcinoid syndrome, amyloidosis, all those things also can produce mitral stenosis. So whenever we get a case of mitral stenosis, the most common etiological factor will be rheumatic heart disease and even uh, second, third, fourth cause also will be rheumatic heart disease only. Very, very rarely only we get other types of cases. So, the etiological factor for mitral stenosis is always rheumatic heart disease. Now, there are some special types of uh, mitral stenosis, especially in India. Juvenile mitral stenosis is very common because most of these uh, mitral stenosis uh, cases, they present to the doctor after uh, many years because uh, initially there will not be any symptoms but in our country uh, because of repeated attacks of uh, rheumatic heart disease patient can have early onset of uh, symptoms in mitral stenosis so this is called as juvenile mitral stenosis another important condition which is related to mitral stenosis Ortner syndrome enlarged left atrium compresses the recurrent laryngeal nerve and produces hoarseness of voice you can see here left atrium which normally does not compress the recurrent laryngeal nerve but uh, rarely in mitral stenosis because of the large, large atrium which can compress the recurrent laryngeal nerve and produces hoarseness. This is called as Ortner syndrome. Another syndrome associated with uh, uh, mitral stenosis, uh, it is actually associated with AST. Patient who is having AST can have associated acquired mitral stenosis. AST is a congenital disorder, but in that type of patients, if the mitral stenosis is developing, we can call it as Lutenbacher syndrome. But uh, here the AST is congenital, that is nothing to do with the mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis is normally uh, acquiring due to uh, rheumatic heart disease. So, a patient who is having AST, who is developing uh, uh, mitral stenosis, we can call that syndrome as Lutenbacher syndrome. Now, once you get a case of mitral stenosis, most of these cases are asymptomatic, but repeated attacks of my, uh, mitral valve because of rheumatic heart disease, especially in our country, that can produce early symptomatic uh, phase. But normal cause, mitral stenosis is a uh, benign condition initially. Uh, it produces symptoms uh, after many years, uh, or normally after 10, 15 years only, they come with clinical symptoms. Now, once the patient develops left atrial enlargement, that can produce some back pressure in the pulmonary circulation and patient can have some pulmonary edema, pulmonary hypertension, 
that produces dyspnea orthopnea pnd and all patient can have palpitation because of atrial fibrillation that is a most common arrhythmia seen in uh, mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation so atrial fibrillation is very very common that produces palpitation mitral stenosis as such will not produce palpitation but the atrial arrhythmias can produce palpitation patient can have secondary uh, right ventricular hypertrophy pulmonary hypertension that produces chest pain uh, some patients can have hemoptysis this is due to pulmonary uh, vein uh, or collateral rupture that is called as pulmonary apoplexy that is a part of uh, uh, pulmonary hypertension recurrent bronchitis or winter bronchitis is very common in patients who is having large left atrium compressing the left main bronchus produces uh, recurrent infection especially on the left side of the chest now other clinical findings in mitral stenosis you can get malar flush it is not very common nowadays because uh, the treatment occurs very early uh, that's a late sign not seen nowadays jugular venous pulsation is elevated because of the uh, le- uh, the pressure in the uh, uh, pulmonary circulation increases that leads the pressure in the right atrium and right ventricle that produces uh, different waves in uh, jvp pulmonary hypertension produces prominent a waves atrial fibrillation produces absent a waves so the prominent a waves is a classical finding seen in pulmonary hypertension but once the patient develops atrial fibrillation this a waves can be diminished pulse normally it is low volume pulse because uh, uh, the left atrium contributes 15% of the uh, left atrium contraction that is atrial booster kick con- and atrial contraction produces nearly 15% of the ejection fraction because of the tight mitral stenosis sometimes um, the ejection fraction can be slightly reduced that produces low volume pulse tapping apical impulse is classical because the valve closes and opens with a sound opening sound is called as opening snap and closing sound is loud s1 normally the closing sound is s1 when the tight valve closes with a loud sound this produces very loud s1 which may be palpable this is called as tapping apical impulse and there can be a diastolic thrill because of the diastolic murmur uh, mid diastolic murmur left parasternal heave is due to left atrial enlargement now once there is mitral stenosis the only chamber which is involved in mitral stenosis is actually left atrium left atrial enlargement can occur then later pulmonary hypertension that leads to right atrial and right ventricular enlargement that is a late stage of the uh, disease but early stages of the disease the only chamber which is enlarged is left atrial enlargement clinically that will produce a left atrial parasternal heave on auscultation you get uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, added sounds on uh, precordium uh, if you see the first chart sound that will be very loud that is a classical finding seen in mitral stenosis even if you don't hear anything the if you get a f- loud first chart sound that is a classical finding of mitral stenosis you have to remember that the valve is very tight and it opens with a sound and it closes with a sound so opens with a sound is opening snap closes with a sound is loud first out sound so in a normal mitral stenosis you get an opening snap that is an opening sound of a tight valve and you get a closing sound that is the uh, closing of mitral valve that is loud s1 which may be palpable so loud s1 is classical for mitral stenosis opening snap is classical for mitral stenosis this may disappear in calcified mitral valve and you get a low pitched rough rumbling mid diastolic murmur with pre systolic accentuation when the blood from the left atrium during diastole passes through the tight mitral valve to the left ventricle that produces a uh, murmur that is mid diastolic murmur that is a flow normal flow through a tight mitral valve produces a mid diastolic murmur then at the end of the diastole atrium contracts or you call it as atrial booster kick that produces a uh, 
pre-systolic accentuation. So you get a mid-diastolic murmur with pre-systolic accentuation. So that is the murmur in mitral stenosis. This murmur best heard of, over the apex with bell of the stethoscope in left lateral position, breath held in expiration. So all left sided murmurs are better heard in expiration and it is heard better with the bell of the stethoscope. It can increase with squatting exercise. The murmur is sharply localized to the apical area. And whenever we get a diastolic murmur, it is not the severity of the sound, it is the length of the murmur which determines the severity of lesion. So in systolic murmurs, the sound when it increases, the severity increases. In diastolic murmur, the length of the murmur increases that indicates the severity of the lesion. So any mitral stenosis or mitral valve lesion can mask the findings in aortic valve lesions like aortic regurgitation, aortic stenosis. All these uh, uh, events can be masked by a, by a mitral valve lesion. So mitral stenosis can mask the findings in aortic valve lesions. You can see here mitral stenosis loud S1, there is opening snap, after second sound you get an opening snap, second sound will be very prominent in pulmonary hypertension, P2 will be prominent in pulmonary hypertension, then you are getting an opening snap, then there is a mid diastolic murmur, then there is a pre systolic accentuation, you are getting again loud first start sound. So classical finding you get in mitral stenosis is a loud first heart sound. That is a most classical finding. Tight valve closes with a very high uh, intensity sound. So that produces loud first heart sound. Then you get opening, then uh, the systolic area, there is no murmur actually. So there is no systolic murmur. Then S, S2 over, the S2 may be loud because of uh, pulmonary hypertension. P2 may be very loud. Then you get an opening snap, that is the opening sound of a tight mitral valve. Then you are getting a uh, mid diastolic murmur, blood flow from the left atrium to left ventricle through a tight valve that produces a mid diastolic murmur. At the end of the diastole, again left atrium contracts, that produces little more uh, blood may eject through the uh, mitral valve, that produces a pre systolic accentuation. That completes the uh, uh, cardiac auscultation finding in mitral stenosis. Now, complications of mitral stenosis. Many patients with mitral stenosis can have pulmonary edema. That is because of the left atrial pressure increases. That increases pressure uh, increases the pressure in the pulmonary circulation. That produces pulmonary edema and breathlessness. Atrial fibrillation, embolism, stroke, all these things are common. Uh, problem in mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation because left atrial enlargement occurs, the flow in the left atrium is reduced, stasis increases and the atrial enlargement slowly produces atrial arrhythmias that is atrial fibrillation. This atrial fibrillation reduces the contraction of the left atrium further then that produces stasis of, stasis of the blood in the uh, left atrium produces lot of thrombus. This thrombus can or thrombus can go from the left atrium to left ventricle, from there it will go to the circulation that produces uh, stroke, embolism, all these things. Recurrent bronchitis is very common because left atrium compresses the left uh, major bronchus. Uh, hemoptysis also we have seen pulmonary apoplexy, pulmonary hypertension, right ventricular hypertrophy, congestive cardiac failure, all these things are chronic complications of uh, mitral stenosis. Now, once the patient develops pulmonary hypertension, you can get some findings like uh, dull second space uh, percussion, prominent A waves in JVP, loud P2, ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area, pulmonary regurgitation murmur that occurs afterwards that is called as gram steels murmur. Right ventricular hypertrophy can produce RV parasternal heave. Previously, we have seen LV para, L, LA uh, parasternal heave. Here the patient develops RV parasternal heave that will be the lower part of the sternum, LA will be the upper part of the sternum. Functional tricuspid regurgitation because of the left right ventricular enlargement that produces a pan systolic murmur. All these things occur after many years in 
mitral stenosis. So complications are not early in mitral stenosis, they occur very late in mitral stenosis. But repeated attacks of mitral valve by rheumatic heart disease that can produce early symptoms in pulmonary, early symptoms of pulmonary uh, problem in mitral stenosis. Now, normally mitral stenosis means there is loud S1 that is because a tight valve closes with a high sound that is loud S1, but that is blunted in conditions like calcified mitral valve associated dominant MR. If the patient is having MR with MS and if the MR is dominant, mitral valve may not approximate closely, valve leaflet approximate closely and that produces absent first heart sound and in congestive heart failure also because of uh, left uh, ventricular dilatation, you get absent first start sound. So, these are the conditions where we get soft S1 in mitral stenosis. Now, atrial fibrillation with mitral stenosis is a common complication due to left atrial enlargement, irregularly irregular policies, classical ECG shows irregularly irregular QRS complex. Varying S1, normally in mitral stenosis, loud S1, here it is varying S1. Absent A wave in JVP, normally pulmonary hypertension produces prominent A wave, here it is absent. Absent pre-systolic accentuation, that is because atrial fibrillation reduces the contraction of the atrium and atrial booster kick is removed. So, uh, pre-systolic accentuation is completely removed uh, and embolic strokes are very, very common in atrial fibrillation like any other condition which produces atrial fibrillation. Now, opening snap, you can see here first heart sound, second heart sound, opening snap is normally produced by opening of the tight valve. So, it is opening snap produced due to the sudden tensing of the anterior mitral reflect due to sudden stoppage of the mitral dome when it moving towards the LV, it indicates pliability of valve. That means, valve is normal, we can repair it, but once a, a opening snap is removed, that means mostly it is a calcified mitral stenosis then we will have to replace the valve. Better heard in the medial to apex increases with hand grip standing expression. Absent opening snap is like uh, very mild MS, you may not see, get anything. You get only a loud first heart sound. Calcified mitral stenosis, mitral stenosis, cardiac failure, mitral stenosis with aortic regurgitation or MR. Severe mitral stenosis uh, findings, uh, you can see here the murmur may slightly change according to the severity. Duration of the diastolic murmur is directly proportional to the severity. So, in a systolic murmur, the loudness of the murmur directly proportional to the severity. In diastolic murmur, it is the duration of the murmur. Longer the murmur, severe the stenosis. A2 opening snap interval shortens in severe mitral stenosis. Atrial fibrillation with pulmonary hypertension indicates severe stenosis. On echo, you can see the valve orifice, mild 1.5 to 2 cm square moderate 1.1 to 1.5 cm square, severe less than 1 cm square. Now, x-ray you can see one important finding will be uh, pulmonary plethora will be very uh, prominent. You can see the left atrial shadow. This is sometimes called as shadow in shadow. Uh, you can see the uh, uh, right uh, ventricular shadow. Inside that you can see the left atrial shadow and that is a classical finding in mitral stenosis. This is called as double density sign. The right side of the enlarged left atrium pushes into the adjacent lung and creates an additional contour superimposed over the right heart. Now, ECG shows P pulmonary that indicates, sorry, P mitral that indicates uh, the left atrial enlargement. You can see a notched P wave. Notched P wave is not usually seen in ECG. Here, since it is wide, the P wave is wide, more than 2.5 small divisions and there is a notch in between M shaped P wave, you can get in mitral stenosis and left atrial enlargement. If the patient develops atrial fibrillation, irregularly irregular QRS complex and you may not get proper P wave. So, atrial fibrillation, P mitral, these are the two important findings. And normally, uh, when there is mitral valve stenosis, Depending on the valve orifice, orifice problem, depending on pulmonary hypertension, depending on calcification, depending on MR, all these things, you may have to decide whether the patient should go for mitral valve uh, 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 repair or mitral valve surgery. So, uh, that all will be decided by echo, 
and uh, angiogram uh, cath after cath and echo it will be decided whether the valve should be replaced or valve should be repaired so mitral valvuloplasty means you know that mitral valve is already uh, that valve orifice is constricted we can dilate the valve using a balloon technique so you can see here something is inserted inside the valve and that valve orifice is dilated that is called as valvuloplasty this can be done only in a normal valve without calcification without any regurgitation if there is a significant calcification or regurgitation it is better to replace the valve so we have discussed about most clinical findings with mitral stenosis these type of patients may come to emergency room with acute breathlessness that will be their most important problem and atrial fibrillation these are the two important problems uh, uh, in mitral stenosis they can come to emergency room if the patient come with acute breathlessness then it is mostly due to the pulmonary edema we can treat with uh, uh, diuretics like you can give lasix uh, 80 to 120 mg with nib support if the patient come with atrial fibrillation embolic stroke then we have to treat with uh, uh, heparin uh, or low molecular weight heparin warfarin all these things so depending on the uh, valve lesion then uh, orifice uh, then we have to decide whether uh, valvuloplasty or mitral valve replacement is required or not once replaced then we will have to again continue this type of drugs like warfarin should be continued if there is a metallic valve uh, then uh, that to prevent uh, problems like uh, uh, embolism we have to continue warfarin and infective endocarditis prophylaxis should be added once the valve replacement is done thank you